A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, You are the salt of the earth, but if salt loses its taste, with what can it be seasoned? It is no longer good for anything, but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city set on a mountain cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and then put it under a bushel basket. It is set on a lampstand where it gives light to all in the house. Just so, your light must shine before others. They may see your good deeds and glorify your heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear brothers and sisters, we just um, heard these words huh? that he says to his disciples, You are the salt of the earth. And then he, he says what the consequence is so if the salt loses its taste. It is no longer good for anything but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. Besides the salt, when he speaks about the light, and um, day before yesterday, the second of February, we celebrated the, the candle procession here in the church, um, and uh, we went around uh, in memory of the time that uh, Jesus was brought to the temple by Mary and Joseph. And Jesus says, uh, "You are the light of the world." Just so. Your light must shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your heavenly Father. We know that salt at that time was necessary to preserve food. There was no refrigeration. And of course, salt always gives some flavor to, to the things that are cooked. And then in the Old Testament, besides this, it's also surprisingly viewed as a purifying element. For instance, in the book of Exodus, the Lord said to Moses, make an incense blended as by the perfumer seasoned with salt, pure and holy. The salt purifies, makes clean. It is also a symbol of fidelity. In the book of Numbers, also in the Old Testament, all the holy offerings that the Israelites present to the Lord, I have given to you. It's a perpetual due. It is a covenant of salt be be forever before the Lord for you and your descendants as well. Covenant of salt forever. Sign, symbol of fidelity. What can the relevances be of these comparisons in our time? Just take a look, for instance, at the, the 20th century. We could go much further, but just to, we'd say the 20th century was probably the, the bloodiest century until now. The, the number of people who have died in, in wars in the 20th century uh, it's many more than all the centuries before, right? summed up. And um, First World War in, in Europe, huh? Second World War, and then the, the Shoah, the Holocaust. Huh? And I'm just quoting these things because they took part in what seemingly was the, the Christian Europe. Christian countries, huh? And how is this possible? Is it possible that those Christians really lived their identity when this happened? And also the recent war that we're having in between Russia and Ukraine, you'd say two, let's say 
very traditional and uh, very Christian countries, mainly Orthodox but Christian countries. Lord, it is a pity that um, what we see here, but uh, later we shall see that it's not something of the past or otherwise uh, far away, but also close to us. Because at times people do not react when things go wrong, and um, they collaborate with the enemy other times. What about us in our own surroundings? And of course we try to be kind and faithful to friends, to relationships. And at times you could say that we know the theory very well, but in the time in which we live, remember when I was at the university, studying law, is that one of the professors once said to us that never in history people have known so much as we do about everything related to sociology, to politics, and to how we should act to be happy. And never in life you have such, such rates of divorce. Look at the number of abortions. Look at infidelity in marriage, corruption in politics. It's probably of all times, but nowadays we see them much more clearly. Lord, um, help us to be salt and light in this world. And thank God you have uh, examples of people who, in a difficult world, do their best. And today I read an interview in a newspaper um, with a woman who is happily married, mother of three sons, and uh, 39 years old, huh, and chief of an international justice mission. And, uh, and she takes care to solve topics like human trafficking and prostitution, child abuse, and on other issues of this kind, huh? things that are certainly not nice. Huh? And one of the things that she said struck me. She, she says, I see darkness, yes, every day in my work, but I still believe in the possibility of realizing God's kingdom on earth. And she quotes uh, a passage of the letter to the Hebrews that personally I like very much. She says that it's a definition of faith. Faith is the certainty of the things we hope for. It convinces us of the truth what we don't see. Lord, um, forgive us our sins eh? and also increase our faith. Eh? Because the, the Lord wants you and me to, to do our best in the world we live. There's a, a blessed sin, there's a, a bishop who has become, who has declared blessed sin, this in the process of canonization. And um, it's a bishop I knew quite well. And um, once he wrote this, I think it's words that, that can be encouraging for us today. With the help of many other Christians who are also working for Christ, in the heart of the church. We have to build a containing wall to stop people from fleeing madly from God. The desire to convert them into the apostles who help to bring souls back to God. What I would say is, uh, first of all, we need to, to be really salt and light on ourselves, huh? to have the flavor of Christianity in our lives. And he he says also, and who are we? A bit of salt, a bit of leaven mixed into the mass of humanity. Because indeed, we're nothing. Just look at the amount of people who are here. But this salt and leaven, with God's grace and our correspondence, will help restore divine savor to those who have become insipid. It will leaven the flour and transform it into savory bread. If each one of us does his best, her best, to, to be with the Lord. The Lord will take care of many things that are impossible for us. I also read recently a, a passage of a, one of the documents of the Second Vatican Council about the, the apostolate of lay people in the midst of the world. And um, it also applies to, to this situation. The witness of our Christian life and the works done with a supernatural sense of purpose, just doing things 
and the love of God are effective in attracting people to the faith and to God. Let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. In Psalms being light is avoiding pornography and evil thoughts, for instance. Do our best, to, even those of you who may be called to participate in politics, to make a better country of the place where you live and to take care of other people. Also, working in places that require a special vocation, for instance, the, the film industry, the cinema, and uh, making movies and shows that are good for the family and also funny, but in a creative and positive way. Let's ask the Lord that he helps us to be like this. Let's ask our Mother Mary that she helps us to, to wake Jesus up. At times it may seem like he did in the boat with the disciples, that he holds asleep. Lord, we know that you can help us, and you're able to, to cure all the diseases of mankind. We ask you also to give us the, the necessary number of vocations to guarantee the triumph of truth, goodness and justice, in the life of each nation for the good of all mankind.